About seven years ago at CAM, Center for Asian American Media, uh, with the encouragement from the Internet Archives, we put a call out to the community for families that had shot 16 millimeter, 8 millimeter, or super 8 millimeter home movies. And, and if you're old enough to remember a time before video and a time before digital, there was this analog world and in, in recording uh, our, our, your vacations or your child's first steps, people would, would shoot film. And of course, you know, technology has changed so much, so uh, all of those kinds of images are at risk. And yet they're so valuable, right? They're the only record of how Asians in America lived in the mid-20th century, mid century. Because all of the other images in mainstream media are full of stereotypes. They don't reveal how we really lived. So there was a real mission to that project, this project. So we've ended up over the years working with dozens of families. We have hundreds of hours. And, and a lot of this footage is now on, on uh, digital drives. And for this project, I uh, reached out to Chet Canlis at the Manila Town Heritage Foundation because Chet had shot some video for us. And I thought I wanted someone rooted in this community maybe to uh, take, a, take a crack at editing a lot of this footage together that you're going to see. So um, I'll stop there, invite Chet to say a few words about his experience in editing, and then I want to come back and introduce uh, the creative team that has created the musical score that you're going to hear with these images. So hang on. Thank you, Steve. Um, has anybody seen Chinatown yet? Thank you, Chinatown. Um, thank you, um, CMAC. Thank you, um, the Gameboy um, Foundation for the Arts. Thank you, Stephen Gong, once again, uh, and Fernanda D'Agostino, who um, helped protect um, this projection. Um, what you're about to see is a film called Memories to Light, um, based on uh, Asian American families that have always thrived in the United States. Like Stephen says, we don't necessarily see those kind of images, but they are out there, and um, if, if there's proof that Asians belong in America, you're going to see it right now. Um, I also would like to thank Candace Huey, the Bruce Lee of uh, Chinatown Arts um, uh, Management. <laughs> and um, also I have some film instructors I need to thank, um, David L. Brown, the uh, godfather of documentary filmmaking, and John Carlson, who's an experimental um, film pioneer. Also, I um, would like to thank all the families that participated in um, given the archives with CAM, it's really special to have uh, people that are successful, people that love their families, people that love their community, that look like us on the screen. So thank you everybody for showing up and watching the film. Um, also, lastly, I would like to thank the composers here, uh, Digital Danny Clay, uh, 21st century uh, modern composer, awesome. Um, Teresa Wong, the lovely and talented cellist, uh, co, uh, co uh, what's my call it? Uh, <laughs> co composer, and um, I thank you both for a tremendous job and recording and performance uh, for this event. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chet. Chet did such a good job of introducing. I'm just going to ask Teresa and Danny to come up and say a few words. again for coming out and uh, I want to just say thank you again to Candace and Stephen Chet and also to Susan Miller from McAvoy Foundation for supporting this project. Yeah. So Danny and I um, have collaborated before but um, this is the first time that we created something for a moving image together. So it was a real treat to work with this amazing archival footage that you're about to see. And so we approached it similarly to what Chet did, which was go in 
like go into an archive. So we kind of created our own archive by reaching out to various people in the community, which Danny will talk more about. Um, but um, we also assembled our own sort of improvisations into the piece. So I'm playing cello and um, singing and electric guitar and shang, but we also have contributions from friends and family and students of sounds that they made with a sort of prompt of, you know, what is the sound of your community? Or if you made an audio track to represent um, a place in Chinatown that meant something to you, what, it would, sound, what would that sound like? Um, so Danny can talk a little bit more about that. You said it so well, Teresa. The one thing I'll say is that when you hear a lot of the sounds that you hear, like Teresa said, when all of a sudden a beat pops in surprisingly, or you know something that sounds like a lo-fi, you know, ambient lo-fi track, a lot of the sounds you're hearing are actually uh, students of ours, um, you know, in the somewhere between the age of five and eighteen, giving giving you their their impression of this community. So I hope, uh, I really want to especially thank all of the young voices that contributed to the sounds you're going to hear tonight. And then just one last thing. So what you're going to hear is what we created when we sat down together and in a way kind of DJed the set. So it's really a live improvisation that we recorded with all of these sounds collaged together. So I hope you enjoy it. And uh, thanks also to Mark up there and Richard who are helping uh, Fernando and Agustino doing the map their way up there. And SK, where is SK? Our awesome production manager.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 